This is Cheryl Peterson reading from the book 21st Century Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, a modern version of Mary Baker Eddy's Science and Health. I'm reading from the chapter Review, a few questions and answers. Question, what is God? Answer, God is bodiless, divine, supreme, infinite mind, spirit, soul, principle, life, truth, love. Question. Are these terms synonymous? Answer. They are. They refer to one absolute God. They are also intended to express the nature, essence, and fullness of Almighty God. The attributes of God are justice, mercy, integrity, wisdom, goodness, and so on. Question. Is there more than one God or principle? Answer. There is not more than one God. Principle and its idea are one, and this one is God, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent being. Omni is adopted from the Latin adjective signifying all. Therefore, God combines all power or potency, all science or true knowledge, all presence. God's reflection is child, man and woman, and the universe. The diverse manifestations of divine science indicate mind, never human mind, and have one principle. Question. What are spirits and souls? Answer. To human belief, they are personalities composed of consciousness and unconsciousness, life and death, truth and error, good and evil. Divine science reveals how those contrasting terms don't agree or conform to one another. Truth is indivisible. Error is divisible. Truth is limitless. Error is limited. Truth is intelligent. Error is non-intelligent. Moreover, truth is real and error is unreal. This last statement contains the point you will most reluctantly admit, although first and last it is the most important to understand. The terms souls, spirits, or human beings are as unsustainable as the term gods. Soul or spirit signifies infinite being and nothing else. There are not finite souls, spirits, or beings. Spirit or soul means only one mind and cannot be rendered in the plural. Mythology and human philosophies have perpetuated the fallacy that intelligence, soul, and life can be divided and confined and thereby materialized. Idolatry and ritualism are the outcome of all human-made beliefs. The science of spirituality comes with tool in hand to separate the chaff from the wheat. Science will declare God aright, and Christianity will demonstrate this declaration and its divine principle, making humankind better physically, morally, and spiritually. Question. What are the requirements of the science of soul? Answer. The first requirement of this science is, you shall have no other gods before me. This me is spirit. Therefore, the command means this, you shall have no intelligence, no life, no substance, no truth, and no love except the unlimited. The second command, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, is like the first. It should be thoroughly understood that all people have one mind, one God and parent, one life, truth, and love. The fulfillment of real identities will be realized as that fact is understood. War will cease and true sisterhood and brotherhood will be established. When we have no other gods and turn to no other but the one perfect mind to guide us, we then experience our God-likeness, pure and eternal, having that mind which was also in Christ. Science reveals spirit, soul, as reflected by spiritual beings. Soul is not in a body, but is reflected by spiritual beings. The belief that the eternal reality can be constrained in relative matter is an error that creates problems. 
A leading point in the science of soul is that principle is not controlled by its idea. Spirit, soul, has never been confined to human beings. If we realize, if we reason from effect to cause, we will believe God created mortal humans, and sure enough, physical existence and God becomes a mystery. We cannot interpret spirit mind through inconsistent perceptions, different for different people. So improve the thought process, reason from cause to effect, and spirit will be found giving the true mental perceptions. Reasoning from cause to effect in the science of mind, we begin with mind, which must be understood through the idea which expresses it and cannot be learned from changeable ideas. We arrive at truth or intelligence, which evolves its own complete idea, when we don't equate reality with human illusions. If soul sinned, it would be mortal. Sin is mortal because it kills itself. If truth is immortal, error must be mortal, because error is unlike truth. Because soul is immortal, soul cannot sin, for sin is not the reality of being. Question. What is the scientific statement of being? Answer. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in separate minds. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation for God is all in all. Spirit is divine truth. Divisible matter is human error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and we are spirit's image and likeness. Therefore, individuals are not things, but ideas of one mind.